Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a blue, um, a faux blue petrified wood and I'm going to be using some translucent clay. I'm using Primo White but you can use any translucent clay you would like and I've cut out 10 equal squares rolled onto a number 3 on my pasta machine, 0 being the thickest setting and I use this cutter which is a uh, one inch cutter. I also rolled out some extra translucent and you probably won't need all that but I always like to roll out more just in case and that's rolled out quite thin onto a number six and I've also rolled out three squares of black again on a number three the same as the translucent and you'll also need a tiny bit of white all this clay is primo you will also need some alcohol inks. Now, you might not have the same alcohol inks, so you're going to have to find what you've got or actually buy some Cernit ones. Um, but I'm using this Ranger Espresso one, and these are all Cernit, and I've got the Apricot, the Turquoise, the Lagoon Blue, and the Navy Blue. You'll also need some translucent liquid clay and some black liquid clay. All right, so I'm just gonna clear my desk a little bit so I've got some room. And we're gonna start off with these squares and we're gonna do two squares of each color of the alcohol inks. So the first one's the espresso and I'm just gonna go one, two drops, one, two drops. The only reason I've cut them out into squares like this is so I get equal amounts. I mean, you could make one big square and work out how much ink you would need, but this is how I did it. So once you've added the ink, they need to thoroughly dry. And then let's go with the, whoops, the next color, this apricot, same thing, one, two, one, two. Just wipe that over, put to one side to dry, wipe away the mess, and then let's go with this turquoise, one, two, one, two. So I think you might have worked it out by now that all those translucent pieces need two drops of colour on each square. So I'll do the rest off camera because that's a bit boring and I'll be, I'll be back. Okay guys, I let those dry and then I just put the two squares of colour together and run through the pasta machine till the colour was mixed. That's, mixed. that's the um, espresso and the apricot, the turquoise and lagoon blue and then I've just got this navy blue to do. So the two squares are put together and then I'm just passing through my pasta machine until it's mixed in. Um, not sure why I told you to only get a pinch of white clay because you need a little ball like this. I don't know what I was thinking. I swear I get my um, tutorials mixed up and I'm thinking of a different thing that I did and uh, anyway. You need a little bit more than a little white clay. <laughs> A bit more than a pinch anyway. Alright, so that's the um, the navy blue as well. I'm going to take these silly gloves off because I can't stand them. And these are just going to be left there. But the other colours, we're going to do um, a blend. So these two are going to go together. And the this turquoise and the white. So you just it's just enough white to make a little... This is filthy, by the way. <laughs> a little bit of white to make a cone like that, a teardrop shape like that, just so you can do a little Skinner blend. So I'm just taking the other piece of clay, and I think that's a little bit too much, so I'm going to take some off. Basically, two squares of the white clay. I don't know what I was thinking, guys. So when you cut your squares out, do two squares of white as well, rolled onto a number three. And that way you've got um, roughly the same 
frisk in a blend. Derp. And the same with this one. We're not doing the whole thing as a Skinner blend. We're doing two separate Skinner blends. So I'm just going to roll this into a teardrop as well. And then we're going to make little blends out of these. So when you're doing that, you do little teardrops, one facing one way, one facing the other. And it just gives it a nicer blend that way. All right, so when you've got your little teardrops, just pass them through the pasta machine until they're blended. I always like to give mine a roll first, like so. Make sure they stick together. And then just pass them through. I'll quickly show you. Pass through like that. Fold colour to colour. Pass through again going downwards. So you do that. And then colour to colour again. And you just keep passing through until you've got a blend. I'll just do this one quickly on camera. Because I don't show my Skinner blends really. Now you can see that this green is bleeding into the white and that's what you want so keep folding colour to colour like that and you're passing downwards keeping the colours in the same direction and if it starts to get a little bit short like this you can just pass it through on a thinner setting so take it down on a thinner setting so it stretches it out that's fine then just go colour to colour and keep doing that until you've got the blend that you're happy with so I'm just going to do this a few more times and then you can see what it looks like. And I think I'm good with that. So we've got the, the dark going into the white. And then all I'm going to do is just um, make this more into a rectangle. And I'm going to pass it through the pasta machine going down this way, but I'm going to take it down to a number six. So then you've got a thinner strip to play with like so okay so there's that one I'm going to do the exact same thing with this one and I'll be back okay so I've got my two blends but I'm just going to put these to one side for a minute and we're going to go back to these two colours here now these are just going to be balled up so this is the apricot and the espresso. And quite literally, we're just going to make these into a chippy choppy. And I'm going to take some of this um, translucent that I already rolled out and just take a little bit of that as well and throw that into the mix. So all these are going to get chopped up but I'm just going to quickly show you because I'm not chopping them really small at all. I want nice big chunks for this. So I'm doing really quite big chunks. They're not getting cut down really small at all. It doesn't matter if there's a few small pieces, but you know, like this, I'm keeping that like that. Nice chunky piece. Actually, I'm going to keep them separate for the time being. So, oops. Okay, so fairly chunky pieces, so there's not even that many pieces to be honest. But obviously it's going to get put together as a block, so there's more than enough. And then what I'm going to do is take my translucent liquid clay. And um, I'm going to take a little bit of the espresso and put to one side. And a little bit of the apricot and put to one side. Um, but this can all have, the rest of it can all have the liquid translucent on there. I'm not putting any mica powder on or anything like that. 
no metal leaf, just the clay and the liquid clay. Give that a tumble, but don't squash it together at this point. Just make sure those pieces are coated in the liquid clay. And then the remainder, the little pieces that we put to one side, I'm going to put some black, not much, just a little drizzle and coat those pieces in the black. And no, I'm not going to put this in a bag and mix it because I don't care if my fingers get dirty. They're only going to get dirty again once I pull it back out of the bag. So there we go. Just saying. Right, and when you've done that, you've coated that, throw it back in the mix, clean up a little bit. And then just throw all that together. So you're going to get some of the pieces coated in black and the other pieces not coated in black, <laughs> obviously. Give it a little squish because we've now got to make this into a block. And I am just going to wipe down a little bit now. my hands a wipe. I bought these Equate wipes and I really don't like them. They're, they're, I think they're just too cheap to do the job, you know. They break really easily. I don't think I'll buy those ones again. I usually use um, some industrial ones that my husband can get from work. But um, I ran out of those. So I bought some Equate ones. I don't like them. Oh well. All right, so back to this little block then, but I don't want to keep it a perfectly level block. I want to give it a little bit of shape. Nothing major. So once I've got it formed how I want, how all together like this, and I'm just gonna take one side and push my finger in. So it's raised here and then it dips down a little bit and I'm just gonna lengthen it a little bit as well. It's like I say, it's nothing major. It's just that I don't want straight, straight lines particularly as I build the stone up. So I'm just, like I say, I've just pushed my finger in. So this bit here is raised and I'm just pushing that up a little bit as well. So now it's higher like that. It looks like a shoe. And then, um, you know, just thin it out a bit at the end, taper it out at the end. So it kind of slopes down a little bit like that. So it does look like a shoe. <laughs> All right, and I'm just gonna put that to one side. I'm gonna bring over my blends. That's the darker going into the turquoise and this is the, not the turquoise, the um, lagoon blue into the navy blue. And this is the turquoise going into the white. I'm just gonna stretch it a little bit. And these were rolled onto a six, by the way. I think I said so, but just in case I didn't. And I'm just going to take a little bit of each of the colours and just put to one side. Okay. Like so. But now all we're going to do is we're going to use these and bring over the translucent clay and my cutter, if I can find it. Oh dear, there it is. Okay, right, so... I'm just going to cut these into equalish parts, like so. Just separate them out a little bit, and then the same on this one, like so. I'm going to start with my darkest turquoise at the bottom, and I'm going to get. A square of trans, just cut it out with my one square, one inch square cutter and doesn't matter if it doesn't fit exact, no biggie, and place it on top like that. And then I'm going to get those little scraps that I left behind, that I cut off. What is wrong with me guys? I can't get my words out today. I hope you're understanding all this. But I'm taking those little pieces that I cut off and I'm just randomly adding little bits of it here and there and I'm kind of just 
smudging it on the surface so to speak just kind of mushing it in there like so and then I'm going to get the next piece of turquoise so going down from the darker to the lighter and then I'm going to get my blade blunt side down and just do some little cuts in there like so it doesn't have to be anything major just want to try and get a few little fractures here and there then I'm going to take another piece of trans so I'm just going to cut another square out place that on top blade blunt side down again and I'm going to push that through as well a few little crisscrossy cuts followed by the next darkest piece of the blend and you'll notice now that it's starting to show a little bit of the white here as well that's fine a few more little pieces of this just slapped on there like so a little bit of the darker blue don't want too much of the dark blue at this point though another square of trans now in all honesty it doesn't matter if you do it in the exact same order that I'm doing it it's it's mix and match guys but just make sure you go from the dark to the light in that order and then you can add the translucent as and where you feel like it really One more trans on this one, I think. And then I'm going to add this white, but I'm not going to add this other piece of white. I don't think I blended it far enough. I would have preferred a little bit more of the blue to have um, bled into that white. So my bad, but um, I didn't blend it far enough. I should have kept going. So I don't want all that white in this piece. And then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this, add a little bit of that darker and I might as well use the rest of this as well. Just kind of mush it. I'm going to get one more piece of trans. And I've changed my mind. I am going to use that piece of white and I'm going to put that on top. See what I mean, guys? This is a stone and it's pretty random. I mean, obviously I sat and worked it out, but how you layer the colours is pretty random. Now I'm taking my needle tool and I'm just going to push some indentations into this. Just to make a little bit of a pattern pushing through that white clay into the stack. So I'm not going all the way down, but I'm probably going three quarters of the way down into the stack with this. And it just gives it another added little pattern. I'm going to close it back up. Like so. And then I am going to take one more piece of trans. And pop that on the top. it all together make sure it's all nicely together and you can see there's a little bit of a pattern going in where I put that indentation through I'm going to take my blade again do some crisscrosses into that stack you can do as many as you want to it's just to add a little bit of fracture push it back together and that's the second block And it's got to fit this chippy choppy block that I made that looks like a shoe. So I'm going to put the, the darker part down first. So the blue going up into the, the trans. And I'm just doing the same thing. Just to 
give it a little bit. I don't want straight lines. I'm just kind of mushing it around a little bit, giving it a little bit of shape and fitting it on top of this block. So you can see it's not in a straight line. Make sure it's nicely stuck together. Okay, so that will do for now. So we're starting to build up this block. Then we're going to take this and we're going to do the same thing as we did before, but I'm just going to re-roll re my translucent clay so it's a nice fresh sheet. And just a reminder, this is rolled onto number six. Zero being my thickest setting. I'm just going to give it a few rolls to try and get some of those little bit of um, air pockets that I can see. Not that it matters too much in a stone like this. Okay, so, um, oh, wrong way. So, no, that's the right way. I want to go light to dark on this one. So I'm just going to randomly stack again. Throw in some trans here and there. Do a few cuts. Mush together. Add another piece of trans. Oh, that one's a bit longer. Just going to break that off. We can always use that somewhere else. A few more little cuts here and there. Another piece of trans. A few more cuts. Another darker piece. I'm just going to get rid of that little excess bit there. And then finish with the darker piece on top. I don't think I need any more translucent clay now. Because I didn't I don't want as much translucent in this part of the stone, so that's fine. So you don't use all of the translucent, but roll enough out, guys, so you know you're not backwards and forwards with uh, making up things. Okay, now for this one, before I put that on there, I'm actually going to take that little bit of white that I tore off and I'm going to roll it out onto an 8. So, second thinnest setting. If you can get it down to an 8, that would be good. And I'm just going to put a few little bits of white in there but I'm not going to cover the whole of the cut just like the top section of it so you only need a little bit and it doesn't matter if it isn't straight either like mine isn't no biggie just pop a little tiny bit there I'm just adding a few more inclusions so I'm just doing it at the top of the cut and then piecing that back together you can do as many of these as you want to Let's go in the middle, take that cut, take a little strip, just pop it at the top like so, put it back together. You don't have to do that, that's just a few added little extra inclusions. i bring that back over there. And then we're just going to add this little section to the rest of the block. Make sure it fits. This one's a little thinner, so I'm just going to squeeze this in a little bit. 
it to go a little bit taller rather than wider. Make sure that fits. If it doesn't, just give this a squeeze. And I'm just going to pop that on there, push that down so it kind of fits in with the rest of the shape. Okay. And then, last but not least, I'm just going to take this black clay and this is just literally going to get plonked on the top. I cut out three squares, I think that's enough, because I just want some black at the tips of these stones, so I'm just literally stacking one on top of the other like so. Give it in it, giving it a squeeze and a squash, try and get it more cube like. But I am going to take these little bit leftover bits of the um, the dark blue. I think that's slightly lighter, so I'll roll that. And again, I'm rolling these on two and eight, so they're thin. Don't think do I want any white in there? I can always add a little bit of white as well, I guess. Again rolled on to an eight. And what I'm gonna do here is add a few more inclusions, but I'm only putting the inclusions in the black part. So you're just gonna cut down the length the depth of the black part so just down to there open the cut up um, it's a bit fiddly guys just take some little strips and just pop it in there close it back up Get rid of the excess. I'm not too worried about it hanging down like that. Let's do a few more. So just you're just cutting down the thickness of the black, the depth of the black. Let's drop another one of those in there. Oops. So it's just going to add a few more inclusions, and plus this is translucent, this little bit, so that will look kind of cool. Pop that in there. I don't think I am going to add any white, or shall I? Yeah, I will. I'll add one tiny, tiny little bit of white, I think. I did practice this, honest. It's just... Uh, it's one of those things that I'll, I don't think I'll ever do exactly the same every time I do it. I mean, it's close to the same. But I'm not going to put the inclusions in the exact same place. You know... You know what I mean. All right, so I've got some little inclusions in there. I think I've changed my mind and I'm going to add another piece of white. So I'm just cutting that open again. Take another little strip of white. Just pop that in there. Oops. And I think that's good, guys. And there's a tiny little bit left, but I'm not too worried about that. Plus that white clay is dirty now. Okay, so that's the block completed, but I'm just going to make sure it's all nicely squashed together in a nice block. But I want it more going upwards than outwards, so I'm just going to bring it out a little bit so it's a little bit taller, like this. And that's the, that's the block. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a little bit of a roll to close it up a little bit. 
actually I'm just going to do that because I don't want any breaks in it just have to reform it again oops okay I think that's good all right so there we go so I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to cut a chunk off. I'm not going to make too many pieces on camera, guys. I'll probably just do one or two. And then I can show you the others that I made. But there you go. That's what it looks like when you slice into it, okay? Now, I found that when I roll this out, the black tends to disappear, but it stretches out on this side. So roll the opposite side of the stone that you want so if you want this to be the front of the stone roll out this way because this is the butt end as well so but anyway I'm just going to give it a quick roll like so I'm going to flip it over and that's the side that I'm using and you can see those little inclusions in there here and there and the little pattern going on I'm just going to get my depth measuring sticks that you can buy from Ojoy Creations. I will list her shop in the description and these are three millimeter ones so this is a three millimeter pendant well it will be when I've cut it out and I'm just going to find a pendant that I like that's going to fit there. I might need to roll it out just a little bit more just slightly stretch it out and I'm going to take this actually where's my all-time favorite shape my all-time favorite shape at the moment is this diamond one with like the slightly curved sides here this is a clay boutique cutter found in Ojoy Creations if you would like to go and check those out and this is also a clay boutique cutter um, so I'm just going to cut into this, give it a little wiggle, remove the excess, chippy choppy guys, don't waste it. I'm just going to put this on some paper, give it a little smooth. Give it a little clean. Isopropyl alcohol and a wipe. Just rub it over. Makes it nice and clean. So there's that piece. It's going to look different again once it's baked. But that's pre-baked. And you can see the little inclusions and the pattern and everything else. And how big those chunks. I left those chunks. So there's that one. I'll do one more, I think. And then I'll show you others that I make afterwards. So I think I'm liking mm, this side. So I'm going to face it this way down. Give it a roll. I cut this one quite chunky because I want to um, make sure I can get my cutter on there. I might just do a round one, guys. I'm going to turn it over. Do, 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 do. Let's give it a quick roll with these. Make sure it's fairly level. Looks like waves. Not sure I wanted it to look like waves, but oh well. <laughs> no, it's fine. They, um, I looked at a lot of these um, blue petrified wood stones and they vary in shades of blue. Actually, they come in all different colours. Um, petrified wood comes in all different colours, but I looked at the blue ones in particular and the blue can vary some don't even have the black on at the top some do you know so don't panic if it's not exactly like the picture you see because it's passable for a faux stone just going to get a piece of paper 
give this a little burnish. Okay, so that's nice and smooth. I bet I don't have my doming thing down here because I'm going to dome this one, guys. And I don't have it down here. I left it upstairs as usual. But I'm just going to do a circle for this one. I'm just going to cut that through and then I will dome it. And it's one of those um, little dishes that you use for an um, oil burner. I've listed it in my Amazon storefront, so if you want to get one, you can. I just found it a perfect doming shape. I really like it. I'll show you at the end, because I forgot to bring it downstairs again. Put that one in there like that, and that's going to get domed. I'm just going to give it a quick wipe. So there's that one and I think that's all I'm going to do on camera but they're two pieces and I'll show you some more when I come back. So I'm going to go and bake these in the oven for an hour. I always bake my pendants for an hour um, and I'll be back. Right guys these are all the pieces I made using that technique. Um, this is the one I did on camera and I cut it this way but I actually ended up preferring it this side. So you know whichever side you prefer I've just sanded and buffed them I've not decided how I'm going to finish them yet but there's that piece and then this is some of the other pieces I did now I decided to do two round ones and I actually domed them and then piece that put them together and I, I stuck them together with some liquid clay on the inside of each one of those so what I did was I used this this is what I was telling you about earlier. It's the uh, little dishes you get for um, oil burners. So I placed one on this side and then I placed the other circle on this side, baked it that way and that, that stuck in there and that's on the top. And two dome pieces put together, sanded and buffed. I absolutely love this. So there's that one. So obviously different on each side slightly different love that and then I made these pieces as well so there's this one and this one and this shape is um, from Ojoy Creations as well that's this one here and then I made these are going to be earrings and a pendant I think so I made um, one larger one smaller and that's this shape plus the mirror image of this one which I can't find right now but that's this that's the shapes I used again Ojoy Creations has those so there's those ones as well I just absolutely love these so nice and like I said I just sanded and buffed all of them I didn't want to add resin on these I like the nat more natural shine all right so there are all the pieces Okay guys, so thank you for watching and I will catch you later. Bye.